All right, so this completes essentially the LLM part of the application. We are simply doing very basic prompt engineering to get our large language models to do what we want. Now, we will integrate both these files, the chat.py file and the inference.py file into a class application. Here we will create the Flask APIs which will connect the inference.py file and the chat.py file with our front end, which is yet to be developed. But let's first build the Flask APIs. First of all, we will need to install Flask and Flask-Cores. So we will just import them into our application. So let's put from Flask import Flask and also import request and JSONify. So JSONify is to return the content of any function as a JSON object. Maybe we will import cores cross region resource sharing. So from flask underscore cores import cores. We will also need CV2 because we will have to convert the images that we get into base 64 encoding so that we can pass it onto our front end. They will be decoding it there. Also import IO. Then we simply import the functions that we are defined in the inference.py file and the chat.py file. So there's an input function, inference, and chatbot. Now we will first initialize our application. So app is equal to flask. This will initialize our application. Now let's first define a function. We need to do this so that when we pass the image to this function, it returns the actual label that we want to show in the image or parse onto chat GPT. So this function is basically going to call the inference function and do a little bit of cores processing on that. We are getting info from the inference function. We have the image, we have all of the classes, the data set and the name information, which basically contains the names of the classes that are present in the image. Classes and image equals inference YOLO and parse the inference function, right? So we will have all this information. Now we convert the dictionary, the classes and the actual classes list. So classes list is equal to list. Oh, uh, sorry, not actually the classes and data set, but rather the classes in the image since there might be repetitions. So we just want to remove these repetitions. So save image classes list. Now we will have only the unique classes in this list. If you can still remember from the video, the classes and image actually contain the label IDs rather than the labels themselves. We will read the label ID from the class list and then read its actual name from the classes and data set dictionary. Also, we will have to iterate it over the length of the list and simply do this. So we learned to do that. Well, let me continue. Okay. Now we have read the labels of all the classes present inside this image and we can simply go down the label and return the inference image label. In a similar fashion to the detect function, we will also write a function that will basically handle the chatbot part. So I got chat front and then we will parse the history of the conversation and the message, of course. Additionally, we will also parse the classes in the data set and the classes in the image objects. The reason why we are doing that is that we want to use this class info dictionary to get the information from the dictionary. So we will need the labels and all the actual classes. That's why we are going to pass these objects further. If you can still remember from the file, it takes info, history, and message, and we have the history and message being parsed to this function. So we don't need to worry about them. Now, what we need to do is gather the info from the class info dictionary that we have imported. So let's first define an empty string called info. And again, what we will do is we will iterate over the classes in the image data set. For each class in the image, we will get the information and populate that into the info string. Then we'll do the same thing like if X is greater than or equal to the classes in the image list. For each class in the image, we will get the information and populate that into the info string. Then we will do the same thing if let's say info is going to be info plus str str. So first of all, we will read the name of the class from the classes and data set dictionary using the label ID that we have in the classes and image list. So that will be classes in the data set and we parse the current object in the classes and image list. That this will essentially give us the name of the class corresponding to the label ID. The X label ID in these classes in the image dictionary. What we're going to do is we will add a string semicolon and then string. Now this string will basically use the class info dictionary. 
So I would parse the name of the class. I think this is getting a little bit cluttered. So I think I'd rather do this. Name equals string classes and data set. And the key is this X. Now we have the name and we want to get the info from the class info dictionary and we will then parse the name of the class and that is a name right here. I disagree with this, so let's remove this. Whatever biggest info we have. We will simply add the current information in this format. So name plus colon and info current. All right, so let me take this out of the statement because we are going to need it regardless and only in this case can we go on. So this makes a lot more sense now. So we have retrieved the information from the disease using the classes info dictionary. And now we have stored all this info into this string. Next, what we'll do is simply get the response from the chatbot. So response is equal to chatbot parts, the info, the history and the message. Let me confirm if we are in the right order. Our chatbot function should be all right. I'm going to continue with this code. We have just finished a response. Also, I see that since we are not actually returning the classes and data and classes and image from this direct function, and also it might be a bit problematic to connect the detect and the chatbot function. So I think a good idea would be to make these global variables. In order to do that, what we can do is make some global variables and then store them into the global variables. So we have a label and this will be an empty list and then we'll have a dictionary class. Now what we do is simply put global labels equals to image classes list. Similarly to make the classes in the data set as global as well. So global classes is equal to classes in the data set. Now what we can do is instead of using classes in image, we are going to use labels. Let me adjust the code quickly. So that should do it. Now we can move these two from the function from the collection. Good to go. So let's move forward. I will have to define a route on which we will be sending the inferred image. So you look at it essentially at the local host backslash upload, we'll be sending this inferred image. So basically the idea is that the front end will send the image to this upload route backslash upload URL. The back end will basically perform the detection and then return the inference image along with other data to this URL. All right. So we get the image from the front end at this URL, perform inference and send it back. We will check that the file name is not empty. So if the user has some files and if it is empty, then again, we will say that we simply put return JSONify and the error this time is no selected file. Finally, this is what we're going to do if the user sends an encoded format. So we will have to decode that first. We will do this first, create an instance of the bytes IO object. So this is where we will temporarily store the image after decoding it. So file.save in memory file and the data of this file will be np dot from buffer in memory file dot get value and the data type is np dot uint eight and the color image flag is equal to one. The image is equal to cv2 dot im decode data color image flag. And after getting the image, we will simply go to the detected function that has been defined at form. And after getting the inference image in this variable detected image, we will now encode it back and send it a JSON object at the root slash upper. So image is encoded as going to be for cv2 dot I'm encode dot JPG detected image. And now we will use base 64 to encode it as a text. So image as text is equal to base 64 dot B 64 image encoded decode UTF dash eight. Now we have the images as text and we can simply return it as a JSON object. And if there said there was some error with reading the file, we can return the following that we have to see type return JSONify error. The error is failed to process the image 500. So right now we have integrated the detection part, but we still need to integrate the chatbot part. For that, we will type app.route and input slash chat and the method is post. And let's define the chat. So here again, we will have to do some checks. So the front end will post a message from the user at this URL and we'll get this URL and we read the message from this URL and pass it on to the language model. If not request.json or message, not in request.json. 
We say that we didn't receive any message and returned a Sonify error. No message provided. Now, if there was a message provided, we simply read that from the request.getjson and the user message is going to be the data message. And we will store the chat history at the front end. So we would just send it along with the message to the chatbot in the data chat history. So this request will contain the message and chat history objects. We'll simply read them and now we will invoke the chat front function and get the bot response. So bot response is equal to the chat front function. We pass the chat history and user message. Let's see if we did that in the right order. Huh, yes, we did. So here we go. We'll get the response, bot response, and we are simply going to JSONify it. So the text would be return JSONify response, which will be the bot response. Now our back end is ready. Once we write the code for the front end, we can test the back end along the way as well.